We're going to start off with talking about a category called greedy algorithms, in particular the hill climbing algorithm. Since brute force optimization has hard limits due to the computational power required, hill climbing is a heuristic which works in some scenarios. This imagines that you locate some arbitrary point on a function surface. You look around and you see which direction steps you uphill, and you take a step uphill until you can't step uphill anymore. Essentially, what you do is you look around, you find the nearest hill, and you climb that hill. And when you get to the top of that hill, you say, I'm done. It works well for convex functions, like a parabola, which don't have multiple extramal peaks and valleys. But it only finds the closest local maximum. So you have to know something about the behavior of your function before you want to commit to using hill climbing. Hill climbing approaches require a figure of merit which provides relative correctness information rather than a single true-false result, to reiterate. To be explicit in algorithmic terms, our strategy with hill climbing is to always select a neighboring candidate solution which improves on this one. In other words, we only want to change one thing, like changing a single value in our candidate solution, a single letter in our password check, whatever it is, change a single coin. But we only want to choose candidate solutions which improve on the one we currently have. So this is, again, like trying to find the highest hill by only taking steps uphill from where you are at now. This is why it's a greedy algorithm. The pitfall is that it might find a local maximum instead of the global maximum. Our process is going to look like this. We set up our figure of merit f, and we select a starting guess, x0, y0, z0, etc. We change a feature of the guess to push it in a certain direction. If that feature improves our result, we keep it and we cycle forward as long as we're making improvements. If no improvement is possible, then we terminate. For instance, Consider trying to find the maximum of the function 100 minus x minus 5 quantity squared in the range of negative 10 to 10. Let's set up our figure of merit, which is f, and see what a hill climbing solution looks like. In this case, we import numpy, we define our f of x, we import matplotlib, we set up a point of grids x, and the y values corresponding to those. We're going to plot this to verify that we're showing you the same function, and that's true. Now begins our hill climbing algorithm proper. First, we're going to choose an arbitrary x, in this case negative 8. We're going to define a left step of negative 0.1 and a right step of positive 0.1. So in other words, we can look at, if we're starting at negative 8, we can look at 8.1 and we can, or negative 8.1, and we can look at negative 7.9, and we see which one of those is better, and then we take that to be our new candidate solution, and we look again, and then at negative 7.8 and negative 8.0. We continue to step in the direction that improves our solution. Next, we set up everything for our loop. We're going to take a thousand steps just to make sure that we see where everything's at. We're going to use a while loop, so we start a counter i, our best x that we've seen so far is our starting x, and our best f is the f of our best x. Our last x and our last f have to fail. They have to be worse than anything that we've seen so far. Right now we're going to set them to be np.nan, which is the special indicator for not a number. Then we're going to set up an array to hold all of our steps that has size num steps plus 1, so this is going to have a column of x values and a column of y values next to each other, which is why it has width 2. And there you can see what steps looks like. The first column being x values, the second column being y values. So this is going to document the history of our hill climbing algorithm. Now we're going to take a look at the meat of this solution approach. We're going to check and we're going to make sure 
that last f and best f are not close to each other or equal to each other. If the last solution we found and the best solution we found are the same, then we know we've reached the top of the hill. And we're going to require that i is less than number of steps. This is to keep us from getting lost in a problem that doesn't have a maximum. For instance, the line y equals x does not have a maximum. It increases forever. We don't want to be caught in an infinite loop. What we're going to do, we're going to store our best x and our best f as our last step. We're going to set up a trial left step and a trial right step. We're going to look to the left and see if it's better. In this case, we're looking first at negative 8.1, f of negative 8.1. It's not better because it's lower. If you look at our plot, you can see that negative 8.1 would be lower than negative 8. So then we're going to look and see if stepping to the right would be better, which is true. So we're going to say our best x is now our trial xr, and our best f is f of best x. Otherwise, we're going to, if we can't look to the left or right and improve our solution, we're going to take a smaller step for a while. We're going to keep decreasing that step size so we can converge on the best answer there. And then to log everything, we're going to print those results, and we're going to store everything in steps so that we can plot this in a moment. So let's run this and see how long this takes to go from negative 8 to finding the true optimum, which should be at 5. So it took 130 steps, and it found 4.999998 as our answer there. If we scroll back up, we can see the progress that has been made. We can see negative 7.9, negative 7.8, negative 7.7. You, know, you can ignore the, the numerical noise, the truncation error that's there. But it steps very consistently over here, and you can track the last value, which is the Boolean telling you whether or not it thinks it's found the solution yet. And that continues until we get closer and closer and closer, and then, aha, we're not changing anymore, therefore we are at the top, therefore we are done. This is how hill climbing works. Let's plot that now so we can see what that looks like. First, I'm going to fill out the rest of the array of zeros with the right answer. Then I'm going to go ahead and plot all of these values as blue dots, as rainbow dots. So we start at negative 0.8, and it continues to take steps and move up this curve consistently until it reaches the optimum. So in this case, the hill climbing algorithm performs very well at finding that global maximum. Let's take a look at a 2D code as well, in this case in the range x 1 to 5, y 1 to 5. You can see that this is a bumpy function in this region. There's a lot of local maxima that can be attained. So let's see how well a hill climbing algorithm does in this case. I provide for you the full code here. We'll take a look at where it starts. In this case, you can see our starting x and y values are actually determined by randint as different as random points in this grid. So we have a random starting place, so I don't know which hill this technique is going to climb this time. And in this case, you can see that it climbed up the side of one of these hills and found a local maximum, but was unable to locate the global maximum near 1.5, 1.5. 1 